Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be making something so simple, but hopefully very yummy. Simple and yummy. I like stuff like that. We are going to be making a yellow cake with chocolate frosting, for icing, frosting, whatever you want to call it. We're going to make all of it from scratch. Now don't be afraid. If you've never made anything from scratch before, don't let the idea intimidate you. Um, I found this recipe online for the best yellow cake with chocolate frosting, and it gives you the ingredients and everything to make the yellow cake and the frosting. Um, and it's not. It's not difficult. It doesn't call for crazy ingredients. It's basic stuff. And if you've never made anything from scratch, I think you could totally do this. It's, it doesn't look complicated at all. So I thought this would be fun to make, and I'll tell you why I want to make this today. Um, my, my dad lives up in Virginia. He's 82. And um, he came down for a visit about a week ago, and he loves to go to cafeteria-style places to eat. And there aren't many of those left here, but we do have a K&W cafeteria. So we went there, and while we were there, I was going through the line, and they have these little desserts. They'll have slices of cake and pie and stuff like that that you can get. And I got this yellow cake with this chocolate frosting on it, and it looked good. It was pretty, but I tasted it, you know, after we ate. I tried the cake. It was very dry. It was like spongy. It was really dry. The icing was just, it was not good. It was, it tasted like it had corn syrup or something in it. It was, it was way too sweet and it was kind of gritty and it was not, it was pretty to look at, but it did not taste very good. And I, I tasted it and the first thing I said was, I can make a cake better than that. And I'm not like some world-class baker or anything. I'm just some goober, you know, I, I can't... <laughs> I don't really know what to do, but I could even I could make a, a better cake than that. And my older son was there, and his birthday's coming up. He's gonna be 18. I can't believe it. And he had said he wanted a cake for his birthday, but he didn't know what kind he wanted. And at that moment, he goes, "I would like to have that for my birthday, for my my cake. I would like just plain yellow cake with chocolate icing." I said, "Well, I I can make you one. I'll do that." And then my dad, he said, you know, every year around my birthday, my wife, my stepmom, will ask, you know, well, do you want a cake for your birthday? And he said, every year I say the same thing. I want a yellow cake with chocolate icing. I said, do you, do you get your cake? He said, no, I never get a cake. I said, well, then why does she ask? I said, he said, I don't know. <laughs> But I've never gotten my cake. I've asked her for about three years in a row, and I never get my cake. So I said, all right, I'm going to make you a cake, and I'm going to make you a cake. I'm going to make both of y'all a yellow cake with chocolate icing. Now, I'll admit, I haven't made a cake in a while. I don't think I've made one since we made one together. I've bought some cakes, but I haven't made one. So I need a little practice. So today, this is going to be a practice cake. Now, I also want to say, if you want to make a cake from a mix, there's nothing wrong with that. I have made many cakes from a mix. And if you want to get frosting out of a can, I've also done that many times. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not one of these people that's going to sit here and judge anybody for the way they decide to make anything. If that's the way you want to do it, that is the right way to do it. Because I'll tell you what, I have had cakes made from a mix that were wonderful. And I've had cakes made from scratch that tasted like a dog's ass. So just because it's made from scratch doesn't mean it's going to be good. It can still taste like shit. You just have shit made from scratch. So, anyway, this cake is so easy. Now it says here, the prep time is 15 minutes, cook time is 25, cool time is 30. Your total time is an hour and 10 minutes. And it makes 10 servings. Now you're going to need quite a few eggs for this recipe. It says that you need six eggs total and they have to be separated, the yolks and the whites. So I know eggs are expensive these days. In fact, I was at Walmart the other day and these Eggland's Best, which I never buy, 
they were only two cents more than the store brand, so I treated myself. I splurged. I got Eglin's Best eggs, and they're stamped with the little red stamps. You know it's good. Look at that. EB. Fancy eggs. And it yells at you, now! for your nutritious diet. So we're putting nutritious eggs, six of them into this recipe. So it's nutritious. Yes, it has healthy eggs. So it's okay to eat all you want. This recipe for the frosting and the cake calls for an entire pound of butter. You're gonna need four sticks of butter. You need two for the cake itself, two for the frosting. And it needs to be at room temperature. Now I'm going to tell you what else comes in this what else goes in this recipe. Now for the cake part, you're going to need four egg whites, one cup of unsalted room temperature butter. That's two sticks of butter, room temperature, one and three quarters cups of granulated sugar. And I'll put this recipe, I'll put this recipe, I'll link to it in the description for you so you don't have to remember this. Four large egg yolks plus two whole eggs four tablespoons of canola or vegetable oil. And it does say in here, I, it says they don't recommend coconut oil for this recipe. Coconut, and so it says canola or vegetable, but not, not coconut, canola or vegetable. I happen to have a little container of vegetable oil here. Um, this is just plain vegetable oil uh, from Lidl. So you need some of that. Um, you need a teaspoon of vanilla, a cup of room temperature buttermilk or a buttermilk substitute. And there are instructions in there for making your own, like a buttermilk substitute. This is cultured buttermilk from Harris Teeter. The funny thing is, so this is just one pint here. They had um, the, two, the big two pint thing of it at Aldi for less than this was. But I'd already left Aldi, and I was at Harris Teeter, so this was more for like half for half as much. I don't like Harris Teeter. <laughs> you also need two and a half cups of cake flour. Now all of this is for the yellow cake part. Talk about a price comparison. I always recommend that you shop around and, co and comparison shop. I do it all the time. This swans down cake flour at Harris Teeter. Uh, Let's see how much is this? 32 ounces. You have two pounds of cake flour. This was $4.99 at Harris Teeter. Guess how much this exact same container is at Walmart? $3.52 for the exact same box of cake flour. So I know if you're like me, you're you know, you watch your money, especially when you're you know grocery shopping. It doesn't hurt to shop around. Now everybody here knows Harris Teeter's high. I mean their prices are high. That is a huge difference. $4.99 at Harris Teeter, $3.52 at Walmart. It's just a huge difference. So that is, this is Swan's Down Cake Flour, America's favorite cake flour since 1894. So we're gonna need some cake flour and I have more than enough here to make a couple, at least three cakes. Okay, you need baking powder, baking soda, and salt. All of that is going into the yellow cake. And then for your frosting, you need another cup of unsalted butter, slightly softened, half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. And from Baker's Corner, which is an Aldi brand, I have baking soda here. Or not baking soda, baking cocoa. Baking cocoa. Totally different thing. 100% cocoa unsweetened. And I haven't even opened it yet. This is a new container. We start with a new one. We need a, um, a teaspoon of vanilla, six cups of powdered sugar. I have just a little bitty bit left. Look at that. It's like cocaine. It's like a little, we're gonna have a, a party this weekend. We have just a little bit there. I picked up another one. This is just confectioner's powdered sugar from Walmart. This is a, a two pound bag. That'll be more than enough, but now you do need six cups. And also in this recipe, if you click on the link for it, if you want a more fudgy icing, there is a link to a, a recipe for a more of a fudgy icing. And I may try to make that one at a later date because I would kind of like to see what that tastes like. Um, you also need a dash of salt and cream, milk, 
or half and half to thin the frosting about two to three tablespoons. Okay, so we, the first thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And the, the instructions here say, I let my oven preheat for a full 15 to 30 minutes before baking. I don't think I'll be doing that, but you can. So you're also gonna need two nine inch round cake pans. And it does recommend that you put parchment, you cut out parchment and put it in the bottom. So it's gonna be greased. And they also put parchment in the bottom to keep the cake from sticking. So we will do that. We will put the parchment in there and then you go on with the mixing of everything and we will get into that in a bit. But before we get started, um, I'm not a baker. You know, I don't, I, I'm not. And when I have questions about things related to baking, Evie's running through here, I like to look them up. And I wondered what the difference was between cake flour and all-purpose flour, because I didn't know. Apparently, the, the difference comes down to protein. Cake flour comes from soft wheat. This flour type has lower protein content and less gluten than all-purpose flour, yielding a more delicate treat. All-purpose flour is made from a blend of soft and hard wheat with 10% protein content and works best for baked goods with denser textures. And then there was another section that said, does cake flour, does real, does cake flour really make a difference? Cake flour's soft, tender texture directly translates into your baked good. However, some recipes simply can't withstand fine cake flour. Chocolate cake, for example, already has cocoa powder, which is a very fine, dry ingredient. The combination of cake flour and cocoa powder usually results in a flimsy cake. What can I use if I don't have cake flour? Making your own cake flour substitute is incredibly easy. Just take out two tablespoons of flour from one cup of all-purpose flour and add two tablespoons of cornstarch or arrowroot powder to get one cup of cake, cake flour. I also had a question about the difference between yellow cake, white cake, and vanilla cake. Because I see, you know, like if you're looking at the mixes, you see mixes for like white cake, yellow cake, vanilla cake, butter cake. What is the difference? Um, let's see. Many people confuse white cake recipes with yellow cake or even vanilla cake. Um, although similar, these actually are totally different types of cakes, mostly to do with how the eggs are incorporated. A white cake recipe only uses the whites of the eggs, sometimes whipped and then folded into the batter sometimes added directly to the butter-sugar mixture. Vanilla cake uses both the egg whites and the egg, egg yolks usually and results in a slightly off-white colored cake, but in my opinion has the most flavor. Not my opinion, whoever wrote this on Google. A yellow cake is made with the egg yolks only, so the batter has a very rich and golden color with lots of flavor and is a very moist cake. Vanilla and white cake recipes are both used in many different recipes as a base by substituting out spices or extracts. Yellow cake is traditionally paired with rich chocolate buttercream or ganache and is not often used as a base recipe for other flavors, although it certainly could be. Again, people laugh and say that white and yellow is not a flavor, but making an order for an all egg yolk cake just does not have the same ring to it. It's just a way of describing the cake so we are all on the same page. And I learned this about white cake. I didn't know this. White cake recipes were originally created for weddings. Only the rich could afford white flour and sugar. So a white cake was considered a symbol of your wealth. These days, a white cake with a fine, moist crumb is probably the most common flavor cake baked for all types of occasions. Oh, then it says, ironically, where I am from, Portland, Oregon, the more organic and less refined your ingredients are, the more expensive they are. Funny how things tend to go full circle. So it's just a little bit of information about cake that I didn't know, and I thought I would pass it along. I thought that was interesting. So, again, if you've never made anything from scratch, don't, don't be afraid. We're going to do it together. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of these scratch cakes either, but I have made them, but it's been, a, it's been a while. I think the last cake I made 
was uh, probably a cake that I made in a video for y'all, so <laughs> it's been a bit, um, except for like whip up a quick box cake with canned icing. So again, we're going to be making a yellow cake with chocolate frosting, and we're doing it all from scratch, the cake and the frosting, or icing, or whatever you want to call it. The shit on the cake, I don't know. Frosting, icing, people debate what, there's a difference between frosting and icing, I don't care. Call it whatever you want to, call it Frank. It's It doesn't care what you call it. So we're going to be doing that, and if you've never made anything from scratch, don't worry about it. This is going to be really easy. Um, I'm not a I'm not a big expert on making things from scratch, but you know, if, if you don't want to make things from scratch, you don't have to. It's okay. You do whatever works for you. Whatever works for you is the right thing to do. There's nothing wrong with making stuff from a mix. Lord knows. And the people who criticize you for making things from a mix, they make things from mixes too. They just don't talk about it. So to put this cake in, I don't really have a big old cake plate or a cake stand. I just use something like this. I have this little carrier here. There's a little serving knife thing in there. And you can actually flip this upside down. It has little cupcake holders in it. So I'm going to be placing the cake onto that base there. And uh, now I will tell you, before we reach this point, I'm not very good at icing cakes. Now, some people do seem to get traumatized by watching unskilled people ice cakes. Some people get traumatized watching skilled people do it. People are very precious about things like that. If that bothers you, I'm just letting you know this is a warning. You will be seeing me ice this cake. It will not be pretty. It will not be graceful. But we're going to get that stuff on there. We're going to slap its ass and get the icing on it, okay? Um, that's coming up. Let's just hope the icing turns out well. So, the first thing we need to do is get our pans ready. I have here my nine inch round cake pans. They're not anything fancy. These are some inexpensive little cake pans that I picked up at Walmart. Um, I think the last time we made cakes, I picked these up. Very inexpensive, but they work fine. Also, the recipe says that you need to grease the inside of these. And it also says that you can line the bottom with parchment paper to make extra sure that it doesn't stick to the pan. And I guess I'll try that. I, I don't typically do that, but I have here some Reynolds Kitchen's parchment paper with a smart grid, which makes measuring easy. It says you can reuse it up to three times. So parchment paper is very noisy. I have some here. It's, it's a very noisy product. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece Let's put them under one of these pans here. This one. I'm going to roll it out and put it under this pan. I turn the paper upside down so the, the rolls kind of go that way. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw around the outside with this pencil. And I'm going to cut just inside that pencil line so you don't get the pencil on the part that is going to come into contact with the cake. Now this is a Ticonderoga pencil, which is fancy, and that makes it okay to use for this for this purpose. So I'm just gonna go around. Hopefully it's making a mark. The recipe says you don't have to do this. This is an optional step. Oh look at that! That's nice. And I could just lay the, over, the, one, the other one over the top and trace it, but I think I'll just do that again with the other one. Well, I just barely tore this piece long enough. <laughs> My hands are clean. And this is a Ticonderoga pencil. Don't forget that. So that makes it, it's, it's, it's acceptable. It's worthy of this project. Cutting this is going to be noisy too, so I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these. Okay, I have my little cutouts here. They, they curled up on themselves, but they are 
nice and cut so we shouldn't need these anymore and so it says you want to go ahead and grease your your cake pans it doesn't specify I guess you could just do it however you want to I think this time I'm going to take just a paper towel I just have a little select size here and I'll just take a little bit of this oil and you can either you can either pour it directly onto the towel or you could just put a little dollop down in there like that you don't need a lot take your towel or you could just do it with your fingers if you want to make sure you get up into the on the sides and down into that little right there right into that part you can't really call it a corner where the sides meet, where the bottom and the side meets. Okay, so you have a nice little coating there. And then we'll just take our, our piece here and roll it out. And we're going to place it down in there. It's trying to roll back up a little bit. you can see how it's kind of sticking to that oil somewhat that that's okay because once you pour the batter in there it's gonna mush it down we'll put a little bit of oil in this one we're using the same paper towel oh god <laughs> we're not gonna need that much we'll try to get this to soak it up I screwed up oh god I did not mean to do that that oil got a little excited well, nothing's ever going to stick to that pan ever again. Oh, I did it, didn't I? There, I got as much as I could. So, okay, now once again, we're going to take our little piece of parchment paper. We're going to roll it out. Hold it like that and get it down in there. Well, that one has a lot more oil to, to cling to, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. All right. So our pans, well, look at the difference. I might have needed to put a little more oil in this one, but we're not going to worry about it. I got it all up on the sides and down at the bottom. So our pans are ready. So we're just going to set these aside and get on into mixing the good stuff. I now have everything ready. All of the ingredients out and ready to make our cake to make the yellow cake part but I can't go any further until I show you my mixing bowls look at these here isn't this nice one thing I love about getting together is I always get to show off my bowls these are mixing bowls I love the pretty colors too and they just nest together so nicely look at that these are from Zach Designs, Z-A-K exclamation point. Aren't they pretty? They're, they're all speckled. Look at those pretty speckles. Wow. I think the blue one is my favorite. I mean, I like them all, but I really just think this one is just extra cool. <laughs> we don't really get to use this one very much. <laughs> Normally, by the time I get to this point, everything is already in their little containers, and I don't really need that one. We use this largest one and this green one the most to mix things. Look at that. So pretty. So this is the biggest one. Um, but I'm wondering if even this one is big enough because I have quite a bit of flour and sugar. I, well, I don't know. I think it'll be okay. If you if you start mixing things and you find your bowl is not big enough, you just transfer to a larger bowl. It's easy. You just have another dish to wash, that's all. Now these bowls, I found these in an antique store, but they're not actually antiques. You can buy these. I've seen them on Amazon, this exact set. And they even have them in different color schemes. I just really like this super colorful one. But for right now, I think, um, actually, 
for the first step, I think I'm going to start with this one because I was reading the instructions and it said that we have to mix the egg whites first until stiff peaks form. Um, well, no, it said you have to mix them and then remove them from the bowl and then we will do the butter. Well, maybe I'll just go ahead and start with this. I'll use this as my mixing bowl. And these are great, but if you get a set of these, I would not recommend putting them in the dishwasher. Don't expose them to extremes of heat or cold because they're made out of that melamine stuff and they really are not made to withstand extremes of temperature. So I hand wash these and I don't, I don't even put them in the refrigerator. Um, I read some of the reviews on Amazon and it sounded like people who did that had trouble with them cracking. So, but I have had these for quite a while now and I just hand wash them. I don't really use them for anything else and they have held up beautifully. They're wonderful. So I didn't get to use my normal little thing for the eggs because there was too much. Um, but according to the instructions, the first thing we want to do is mix together the egg whites. We're just going to beat these together. I got a little bit of yellow in there. I'm going to see if I can get it out with a spoon. So that's our egg whites. Oop, there's a little bit of shell on there. I definitely don't want to leave that in there. So it said you want to mix this together until stiff peaks form. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm back with my egg whites. Now, I didn't really get stiff peaks. I have, well, I kind of did. Well, a little bit. I have made stiff peaks many times <laughs> in my life. Not in that way. Um, well, anyway, we'll leave that alone. But these eggs, it's a little bit. I beat these eggs until the cows came home, and that was about the best I could do. I followed the instructions. I did them like I always do, and I just, I don't know. Well, remember, too, it's those fancy eggs. Maybe they're just so well-bred they can't get a stiffy. I don't really know, but anyway. So we're going to transfer these eggs to another bowl. Right now, we're just going to put them in here, and then we're going to use this bowl to mix up our butter. Okay, so that's our that's our egg whites right there, and in here we have to add some butter. It said you don't have to clean this out before you do this step. The instructions said for the eggs it should take one minute or less to get stiff peaks. It took way more than a minute, and they were room temperature and everything. I follow the instructions, and they just I don't know. Anyway. Okay, so after you remove these from the mixing bowl, you add the butter. You want to mix the butter with a paddle attachment for a few seconds in the bowl. And then with the mixer on medium high, you add one and three quarter cups of sugar until mixed well, and then scrape down the sides of the bowl. We do need two sticks of butter for the yellow cake part. We're also going to need two sticks for the frosting. Now, when I was growing up, we called everything on a cake icing. It didn't matter. I keep wanting to call it icing, but it, the recipe calls it frosting. Now, I always try to, you know, go along with whatever the recipe says. These are room temperature sticks of butter. but all I have is an electric hand mixer. Maybe that's why it took longer. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and cream these together and then we will add the sugar to it. Okay, so here we have the butter. It's been all mixed together. Now we want to take one and three quarters of a cup of sugar here. We're going to add that in. 
the nice sugar cloud that comes up. <laughs> Lord, it's, I need a dust mask or something. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so then I'm going to again mix. I'm going to mix all this sugar and butter together and then we'll come back. There we go. We have our butter and sugar combination. Now to this, it's about to get really crazy. You want to add four egg yolks plus two whole eggs. A couple of my yolks broke, but we're going to go ahead and add this in there and then we're going to mix in the egg yolks plus the two whole eggs with this butter and sugar mixture. Like that. So I'm going to mix this in and then we'll be back again. Ooh, it got yellow. It's yellow now. Look at that. We put in all our egg yolks and we did four egg yolks and then two additional whole eggs in there. It looks like cheesy grits. <laughs> it does. It looks like cheesy grits. You about want to just eat it, but don't because you don't want to do that. Bad idea. So we have more to add to this mixture. We want to add in our oil. Got our oil right here. This is our vegetable oil. Pour that over the top. That's our oil. And we also want to add one teaspoon of vanilla to this little mixture. Oh, I love the smell of vanilla. It smells so good. So now we're going to take this back and mix it again until we incorporate all of that. Here we go. We have our oil and our vanilla in there. Now, at this point, it says we want to add in the buttermilk and all of the dry ingredients. We're not going to do the egg whites yet. I had to bring out my little, this is why I normally have my eggs in, but it wasn't big enough to hold what I needed it to, so it barely helped the buttermilk. But I want to use it, and several people have asked me where I got this. I don't know who made it. I found it in a thrift store several years ago. It's a wonderful little thing. And so I'm just going to pour my buttermilk in there. Yeah, it barely held my buttermilk. Now we want to mix together the buttermilk and all of the dry ingredients with this just until mixed. And it says do not over mix. But isn't this cool? Look at that. Yeah, there's no name and or there are no markings on it or anything, but it's, it's very cool. And usually this is what I, I use for my eggs, but the egg situation for this recipe was a, a little different. So we have our baking powder too. Let's do the baking powder. Baking soda. Salt. And then we have all of that cake flour. Ooh, look at all that cake flour. So that is the buttermilk and all of the dry ingredients. We still have our egg whites over here. So I'm going to go mix this. It says you want to mix it on low until the dry ingredients are no longer visible. And mix on high, medium high for about five seconds and then turn off the mixer. Do not over mix. And then we want to do the egg whites. We're going to be folding in the, eggs, the egg whites with a spatula after we mix this in. Okay, we have now incorporated all of the buttermilk and the buttermilk and all the dry ingredients in here. So it says to fold in the egg whites with a spatula. I hope this will work. And then you want to mix it in until the egg whites, the streaks from the egg whites are no longer visible. I don't know. Don't judge me. Ew. Egg whites just did not do. And this is like a horror show for you people who cook or bake. 
Use this to toughen yourself up and steel you against the mean, uninformed, un in uneducated world out there that can't do diddly squat. Okay. I'm not being mean to it. It smells like a candle. It keeps making me think of this candle. I don't remember where I smelled it, but there was some candle that smelled exactly like this cake batter. Okay. I'm still seeing a bit of the egg white. Now once we finish this, it's going to be ready to go into the cake pans. I'm going to leave it at that. We have our prepared pans here that we did earlier. Okay, so now we are ready to pour. We are ready to pour the batter into the prepared pans. There's some. I don't think that's quite half, but Ooh. let's get some in this one. And this one. Sorry, my arm is in the way. <laughs> And again, remember, this is just a practice cake. So if it doesn't turn out, it's not gonna like ruin anybody's birthday or anything. So we're gonna go ahead and bake this on at 350 for 25 to 28 minutes. And then we'll come back and see how it looks. All right, we are back with the cakes. They came out really pretty. Look how pretty they are very nice and they smell oh they smell so good so we're gonna let these cool off a little bit and we will get started on the frosting that is going to go on these cakes once they have completely cooled and now we are ready to move on to the frosting this looks like it's actually going to be very simple first thing you want to do now because there is so much powdered sugar you have six cups I didn't want to try to do it in any of the regular mixing bowls because look, this is almost the largest one here and look how full it is of this powdered sugar. So I get out my big, happy yellow Tupperware bowl and I have the lid that goes to it. My mom gave me this years ago. I'm going to use this to mix it in just because it's just larger. To make this frosting is very simple. All you have to do is just take your two sticks of butter here. It has, it has sat at room temperature. It's, it's kind of soft. We're going to put these in the, in the bowl and we're going to mix these together. And I, I've just been using my hand mixer for everything because I don't have a stand mixer. It calls for a stand mixer, but not everybody has one. I don't have one. My kitchen really doesn't have any storage. I don't have anywhere to put stuff like that. So I just don't have one. Oh, that one's 
squishy. Now we're going to beat these together. They said it should only take about 20 seconds, but if it's like, you know, when I did the butter for the cake, it, it took quite a bit more than 20 seconds to kind of cream this together. So let me go do that. Looks like a duck's bills. Quack, quack, quack. Well, a lot of my butter is stuck in the mixers. I got out the most of it. So there we have it. That actually, that actually mixed up a lot easier. I think the butter had had a little bit of extra time to kind of soften. So it was much easier to do this. Um, so now we want to mix in our vanilla here and our cocoa powder. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to mix some more and then we'll come back. Okay, that is what two sticks of butter and cocoa powder and a little bit of vanilla looks like. It actually smells really good. Next we're going to add about half of this powdered sugar to this bowl. I'm, I'm going to add it gradually as I go. I'm not going to dump three cups in there right off the bat, um, although it does say to do that and the pinch of salt. So I'm going to slowly incorporate about half of this with the pinch of salt. And we'll see what it looks like after uh, three cups, which is half of this, has been added. All right, here it is with about half of the powdered sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the rest. And I did add a tiny little splash of just 2% milk and said so you can use that or cream or like heavy whipping cream or half, half and half. I just used some 2% milk. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mixing this in and then we will see how it looks when it's all done. Okay, you know how it is when you, you invite someone over or they're going to put something in your car and you say, please excuse the mess. Like they're putting something in your trunk and you say, I'm sorry about the mess. Well, I'm sorry about the mess. <laughs> I know, I have traces of powdered sugar. Now this was six cups of powdered sugar. I do have some residue on here. I kept scraping it down, but some of it is just stuck. And I'm not worried about it. Because look, we, look at all this nice frosting. It turned out pretty great. I have to admit, I've, al I've already sampled it and it's really good. <laughs> It is, it's really good. All right. Oop. <laughs> Let's see if we can put some on this cake. Okay, I took this. This is really cool. See the underside? You could put little cupcakes. You could set cupcakes in there. This is, this is the cake side. So I'm gonna take one of my cake halves put it there like that. I'll put my icing over here. And I am not a cake decorator, okay? Avert your eyes if you are. I, I understand. You can give me 4,700 tips on icing a cake and I will smile and nod and I will pay attention but the next time I go to ice the cake, I'm going to do exactly like I'm doing right here. Why? Um, I don't know really. This is just what I do. You do you. My kids have come to know and love the cakes I make. And they know that they're, they may not be pretty, but they're tasty. They are tasty. Tasty cakes. These little silicone spatulas, I think, are pretty great for this. Okay. I'll try to get it up to the edge. Like that. Okay. All the way up to the edge. We're not going to worry about this, the sides yet. Just trying to get, I don't want a 
whole lot of icing in the middle, but I do want some. Okay, so all I've done is put a little bit of icing over the top of the bottom layer. Here comes the top. Right on top. And we smush some on the top. I did end up adding um, a little over two tablespoons of milk to thin the icing a little bit. A little bit. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, you can give me all the hints you want. It won't change a thing. Some, you know, are you like that? Some things, you just gonna do them the way you do them. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> You're never gonna change. Yeah. That's me with icing a cake. I'm just gonna do it the way I do it. And, uh, nothing's gonna change that. again. I'm pulling from the middle and kind of going out because I had a gob in the middle. I'm trying to smooth it out to the edges. Yeah, again, this is just a practice cake. It's no pressure. No pressure at all. You just do, do your thing. Smush some on the sides of the cake. Okay. The sides are the hardest, in my opinion. I'll just try to do the best I can. You can't really see what I'm doing. It's probably for the best that you can't. <laughs> I'll tidy up around here. Shoot from this angle, I can't see what I'm doing either. I just wanted, it was quality control. I had to make sure it was all right. Like when my kids, you know, they get a, a burger or a sandwich or something. I have to take a bite of it. I have to make sure it's not poisonous. That's what, that's what I always tell them. I gotta make sure it isn't poisonous. I don't want you eating poisonous food. Oh wait, I better take a second bite just to be sure. I'm only doing it for you. You're not even, you're not even grateful. It does look like we're going to have plenty of icing. I think I'm going to have icing left over, honestly. Maybe I was supposed to put it on thicker. I don't know. I don't want it super thick, though. I don't like super duper, super duper thick icing. You know, I don't want it to be too crazy. One of my favorite YouTubers to watch is, um, I think the channel name is Baking with Mimo. I love her cakes. They're so beautiful. And she is so funny. I love her stuff. She makes the most amazing stuff. And she is hilarious. She has a lot of shorts on YouTube. And TikTok, I imagine, but I don't do TikTok. Let's see. Oh, I missed some. I couldn't really see this part. This section I don't like so much. Okay, 
I think that's got it. And I have, I have a lot of icing left. Look at that. I have a lot. So, yeah, and I will, I will tidy up around here and get those bits of icing. But look, here it is. Our chocolate cake. Oh my gosh. All that's left now is to, to try it. Let me clean this up and then we will cut a little bit of this. There we go. I cleaned up around it, made it nice and neat. Look at my pretty plate. I bought these, some of these at Dollar Tree. And this is the little salad plate. And I also had some dinner plates that are the same. They even had coffee cups that matched, but I only got the plates. This was uh, a couple of years ago. So I have this wacky little cake server that came with the, the carrier here. Now I don't want a lot. Um, let's see. I just cut into this. I just want a little. I don't want a lot. Just a little bit. piece is so skinny. This does Let me get something else to lift that out with. I'm going to try a little butter knife here. Oh, look at that. Stick it to my knife. That's pretty. That's so pretty. Looky there. It even looks better than the cake at the K&W. Well, let's see how it tastes. Alright, we are ready to try this yellow cake with chocolate frosting. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh, look at that. I could have, I think I, I would have preferred to have done a little bit more frosting in, the, in this middle layer right here. Um, the top I'm okay with, I think. But that's okay, that's okay. Again, like I said, this is just a practice cake. It's not for anybody in particular. No pressure. But look, look at that. So I think it turned out pretty. Look at that pretty little cake. Oh, that, that frosting smells so good. Oh my gosh. I would say the hardest part of making this was, um, mixing in all the six cups of powdered sugar and I don't know about you but I find it impossible to mix powdered sugar without getting it just I mean not everywhere but it, I, there's always a little bit of powdered sugar that just gets around and I had to go around and wipe it up but I got a little bit on my shirt but not too bad but anyway let's try this and see how it turned out I want to get a little bit with the frosting on it and see oh I think it's gonna be really it's I can already tell it's not as dry as that at the K&W of course I don't know that K&W cake is exactly a good comparison I mean it's not exactly hard to beat nothing against K&W but their cake is not not the best I've ever had Definitely not as dry. The flavor is so much better. It needs a little bit more icing though. I definitely should have put the icing on a little bit thicker. It needs it because the cake itself is not, I mean it's sweet, but it almost feels like it needs a little bit more of the icing, frosting, whatever. I grew up hearing it called icing, so that's what I call it just by habit. The icing is good. Next time I need to do a little bit better job with those egg whites. Yeah. Hopefully next time I can do, I can get them to do the stiff peak thing a little bit better. Um, like I say, I, I, I've, I have beat egg whites many times. I've never had them do quite like that. But it's good though. This is a good cake. This is really good. It's nice and 
and rich and buttery. Oh, look at that. Mm, it just sticks to the fork. It's pretty rich though. I mean, I would not want to eat a whole lot of this because it, it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's rich, you know. But there we have it. We have yellow cake. Just plain old simple, humble yellow cake with homemade chocolate frosting. That's fantastic. I love it. Next time though, I will put on a little bit more icing. And again, I know, I know how to beat egg whites. I just, for some reason, those were just not cooperating. I thought they were at room temperature. Maybe they weren't quite there yet when I started because that can affect how they do. That could have been the problem. I just need to remember to set them out a little earlier next time um, and do a little bit more more frosting. But either, I mean, e even so, I mean, even with that, this cake is still really yummy. Not bad at all for a little practice cake just to try. So then I will be making it again for my son's birthday. And I'm going to make one for my dad next week. I'm going to go see him next week and I'm going to make one of these to take to him. It's not his birthday, but I felt so bad when he said he had asked for one. Well, you know, my stepmom asked him what kind of cake he wanted and he's told her like three years in a row and didn't get it. I feel bad. I had no idea. So I'm going to make him one and it will just be a very, very late or a very, very early birthday cake. Yeah. I think he will like that. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed getting to see this happy little chocolate cake today. What? Yes, and you could make this. You totally could. If you have a hand mixer or, or a, you know, a stand mixer, either one, you would have no problem with this recipe. Just watch that powdered sugar because it does, it can go everywhere if you're not caref careful. But thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.